Okay, I have a journal for you uh, from February 1st. And the Mayan day was five wisdom. What if, I'm just saying, what if the secret was in our vision? What if by changing or shifting our vision, we could have or create or bring about a different reality? Could it be so simple? Well, possibly. Let's explore. Look around you at the people you know, both in your life and by your contact with their work, whether through video, reading, or whatever. Now, among all of those people, you will surely see a number that are quite wonderful folks. While no one is perfect, and I find that a questionable quality, anyway, there are certainly many people with beautiful souls. Souls that somehow shine through, or being. I mean, I'm not going religious on you here. Now, if you're the local Grinch or Mr. Scrooge, you might not be able to see this sort of thing in others. You can't see it in you, can you? I don't know. If so, though, you're not likely looking at my stuff anyway, so I choose not to worry with you, but <clears throat> just to write you off to be your own lookout, not mine. The point I make, though, is that our garden of belief is what is growing the crop of what we see in the world or out there. So, everyone, Let's go down into heart for this. Let's look from there, true home of love on planet Earth. There are truly beautiful souls out there, and I don't just mean the Mother Teresa's either. Take George Nouri, for example. There, you've got an honest, sincere soul who is seeking the truth. <clears throat> like Art Bell before him, there's a beautiful sincerity present in him. Can you sense it? So it's that sincerity I'm talking about. It can be present in what many might otherwise call a, a pretty irascible character. Don't let such traits put you off, but rather give everyone free and full range to express whatever they see as themselves. If you'll stay in heart while you look, the quality of sincerity will shine out if it's there. It's rather easy to spot. You'll also notice the truth seekers among us. They are often intensely sincere. Now, people may get carried away with whatever they're after. Cars, golf, truth, don't let that put you off either. This is no popularity contest, nor a social one either. Those are nonsense qualities put on most often just to please others and not even really sincere. So let's look past them. Perhaps a new definition of quality or sincere is in order, but if so, let your heart be your guide in that. The secret, it seems to be, is just to be in your own heart. Outside the range of control of the mind to do your looking. The other things will pop out and suddenly be so easy to spot. I kid you not, you might even experiment by doing this first from heart and then Go back into mind and try it again to see what you get. But that's not the point. The point is that there is so very much that is of beauty showing up everywhere, every day, most of which we largely don't see. By walking around immersed in thought all the time, we miss almost all of this sort of beauty. 
it's there to be seen, just not seen. Well, that's no fault of light now, is it? So what I'm saying is, what if this was really much more like a Garden of Eden than we could even begin to guess? And what if the only thing keeping us out was our propensity and our almost and our intense, almost insane programming to only see and be in touch with the dark side of life, the fear and all that. Well, what if? Can you go there with me? Our sight, our vision is very much within our control. It's not necessarily that we can make instant changes in how we view things. It's important to know about the power resident in whatever crop we're growing in our garden of belief. If we're not aware of how very much our supposed outer life is guided and controlled by that, then we don't know enough to support this exercise. And that's important. Our beliefs and, and what makes them up, the thoughts and ideas, are largely in control of how we see and experience life. The beliefs control that. We've been programmed to stay in left brain and to see things overall negatively and to pretty much only see the negative side of things. Do you know that? Is that something you've examined and seen for yourself, not taken at second hand? I don't want you accepting what I say just because I say it. That doesn't really help. It doesn't give you the permanent gift which I seek for you, which is the ability to do this for yourself, by yourself, not relying on me or anyone else in any way. So do check things out. If you're going to believe something, let it be something you have chosen and understood for yourself. Now. As we put our gardening gloves and boots on and go to work in there, we begin planting new beliefs that we have chosen for ourselves. Over the few years I've been doing this journaling, I've recommended or suggested many, such as anything is possible, for example. Another belief is that you're already perfect. Many such things have been offered. Take your pick or choose some others that you like, that feel right to you. It's good to be self-aware when we're doing this, to be observant, since when planting any new belief, all the other ones that go counter to it will shortly pipe up, demanding our attention. It helps to be prepared, that's all. Not strictly necessary, though. Anyway, the whole idea that I found behind this is that it's a time to make a choice. What will you choose to keep? The new belief or this older one now clamoring for your continued loyalty? This is a choice that, once quickly made, returns your organism back to quiet and peace. Until you do, however, you'll be haunted by the discomfort, the inner dissonance between the beliefs, new and old. So as we go forward, trusting heart to be our worthy guide, giving it the benefit of every doubt over what mind has to say, our interior garden begins to take on a new shape, size, fragrance, and character. All is well as we go forward, making decisions as they're called for, being true to each now moment. To do such work, we know something of the watch and observe stance. Our vision is often or even generally turned within, and that's great. Still, we can also observe the outside from our place within heart. As we look, we will eventually notice a new cast, something new or different about our vision of things. There's been a shift, and it's likely continuing 
in how we see things. So lots of things are changing and I suggest it can all be traced back to our gardening work. Meanwhile, what I'm drawing your attention to in this journal is how much nicer life begins to look. You find it easier to see the bright side of things. Now this doesn't make you into an instant positive thinker. Nothing like that. It's much more subtle and deep. Still, my bet is that you'll notice at some point that people seem much more beautiful somehow. They seem to shine from the inside. You're more able, seemingly, to see the beauty in them. It's not that it wasn't there before, or it was, and it's not that you've somehow suddenly changed the whole world. Of course not. Still, I'll reserve a wee bit of the possible for that to keep the flavor, the scent of the anything's possible flowers that I'm growing. They're so very nice. That which grows in our garden of belief has some sort of property of being able to affect or control our vision. I kid you not, it really does. It's like certain beliefs simply cut off our ability to see certain sorts of things. It's like they put blinders on us of a certain specific sort, which we don't notice until by our new plantings and decisions, we've sufficiently changed the crop that the blinders are gone. And then we see. Oh, it's so very amazing, my friends. It takes a little while, but not all that very long. Certainly not as long as our earthly 3D gardener friends take to harvest a crop. These inner beliefs are much easier both to weed out and to plant. It just takes some determination to get in there and really start having a good look. That's the secret to getting this whole chain reaction thing started. So that makes this sort of new hobby available to simply everyone, young and old, halt and firm, he, she, and anything between. If you're human or in a human form, then you hold certain beliefs, and that's the fact. So it becomes a matter of just finding your way into your own interior garden there and having a good look. What will you do? Would you like to make some changes in your life? What if it might be as simple as taking stock of your beliefs or starting to monitor them? Do you think some programming just might have made its way into your garden of belief? Frankly, you're bonkers if you think otherwise. That's my thought on it. So, I suggest for one of your first new beliefs, the belief, parenthetically, actually just the recognition accepted as belief, that your beliefs have the power to mold and change your life. And that's a very good one for the start. Otherwise, you'll be missing what you need to see to begin this work. It just won't seem appealing to you. Now, you don't have to have this belief because I didn't. I mean, we don't, a lot of us going in there. But if you do, it smooths the way, it paves the way for you. Okay, I'll give you a good link I came across in Sacred Sarah's work, Tony's work, for self-examining beliefs. Now, you don't have to do this the way she suggests quite so formally. I just give it to you to perhaps start the inner engine going, maybe provide some inspiration or ideas that could assist. Above all, Remember to enjoy what you do. If not, why bother with it? You deserve joy.